Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 2.1, Determining the Average Rate of Change. Rate of change is the ratio of dependent values to independent values. So if we're thinking about the distance time graph, then we often want to know how far we can go, what's the distance that I can go in a certain amount of time. That's called speed. The delta d, change in d, over the delta t, change in t. And we can do that with a lot of different types of graphs. Uh, if we do the independent under the dependent, then delta y over delta x, that's the slope formula, and we're pretty familiar with that. And it gives us the speed, or the rate of change of a line. However, sometimes we'll get a function that is curvy instead. And the more we learn about functions, the more curvy functions we see. So we need to figure out how to find the rate of change in a curvy function. So sometimes we just want to know what the average rate of change was. So from this point, x equals negative 1, to this point, x equals 2, what, how, how far did we change? How far did we go in a certain amount of time? What is the speed? So to do that, we're going to actually find the slope of the secant. What is the secant? Well, we're going to draw that first. The secant is the line that touches the function at two specific points. So I'm going to take my line out, and I'm going to draw a line from the two points that I want to find the rate of change for. So this, it's actually really hard to draw a line on both of those, so I'm just going to adjust it in a second. So you want to make sure that your line goes through both. If you have a ruler, it's a little bit easier to do than I can do with my smart board. So there you go. Now I've got my secant, it goes through both of my points. And you can find the average rate of change just by finding the slope of this line right here. Uh, you could do that by either estimating the y values and then dividing by the change in the x values, or if you have the function defined, which I do actually, I know this is f of x equals negative x squared plus 5, then I can plug it into this formula, f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1, or in other words, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So to find the average rate of change from, and I'm just going to write ROC, because it's a little easier, from x equals negative 1 to x equals 2, I'm going to use this formula right here, f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. So I'll substitute the numbers in, f of 2 minus f of negative 1 over 2 minus negative 1. And just make sure that you keep it consistent. It actually doesn't matter which one you do first, as long as the 2's go first and then the negative 1's, or negative 1's first and then the 2's. Keep that consistent. We plug it into the formula that we've written right here, which gives us negative 4 plus 5 minus negative 1 plus 5 over 3. And that ends up being negative 3 over 3 or negative 1. So the average rate of change is negative 1. So just to summarize, all you need to do is remember the slope formula, delta y over delta x. You draw a line between the two, and away you go. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.